Hey kids, it's JJ again. I just wanted to go over a quick overview of the Betaflight 3.2 features that have just come out or are coming out. Um, this is primarily, I've flown Betaflight 3.2 on the Kakute F4 all-in-one a little bit. I've played with it, flies really nice, but I just wanted to go over some of the cool features. This is not by any stretch uh, an all-in type of video. This is just to show you some of the features that are cool that I recommend you play with. Um, I'm going to do this on the Omnibus F3. If you go into Firmware Flasher, make sure you're using Betaflight, the newest uh, GUI, okay, or the latest GUI. Go down to Firmware Flasher, make sure your board is plugged in. I'm using my dummy board. Pick the board you have, Omnibus in this case. Make sure you click Show Unstable Releases and choose 3.2 Release Candidate. Put on your full chip erase, load online firmware, takes a second, and then hit flash. It will erase, then it will flash, and then it will check. We've all done this before probably, so bear with me. There are a lot of really cool features in the new beta flight um, that I used to enable through CLI or the command line interface. So I'm pretty pumped about that. So I'm just going to go over some of the quickie stuff that I have found that's pretty cool and explain some of it. I'm going to try and make this quick because I know long beta flight movies are boring. Um, setup, nothing really massive has changed in here. Um, everything should be kind of standard. Go into ports, nothing has really changed in here that I've seen. Um, I set mine up on that and we'll hit reboot. Again, this is just a dummy board. I'm not really uh, configuring anything fancy here. Okay, configuration. This is where it starts getting interesting. Uh, this is all the same, you know, selecting your layout. What is new is for those of you guys that want to do sidewinders, uh, sidewinder basically is when your props are going the opposite direction because one we have clockwise, two is counter, three is uh, counter, and four is clockwise, right? Uh, for those of you who want to do a sidewinder where you reverse the direction of the motors, okay, uh, this is to keep grass and stuff like that from hitting your camera. A lot of people like to do this, uh, keeps it from, um, you know, when you go into the grass, from splashing schmutz and shit on your, uh, your camera. But in return, it also flashes the schmutz into the side. So, you know, whatever. Uh, this will add a little bit of filtering to change that directional value. So that's kind of clever. I might try that sometime to play with that. This is all the same down here. ESC motor features, you will see D Shot 1200 if you have 32K ESCs. But there's also a new one called Pro Shot 1000. And Pro Shot 1000, from what I understand, is a bastard or mutated version of D Shot 600 with PWM. The difference is it is technically faster because it's delivering 8 bits of data versus 16 for every pulse. And uh, But the problem from what I hear is if you try to go too fast with it from a processing standpoint, you have to you go back to using cap filters. Um, I really don't think there is going to be any difference in flight characteristics from D-Shot 6 to D-Shot or ProShot 1000. If you want to go out there and try it, go for it. But I think from the me uh, me mechanical timing aspect and electrical aspect of things, I don't think you're going to see a an issue. And it's going to be more susceptible to noise and interference. I guarantee it because you're going back to using caps to, to filter things. So I would stick with D-Shot 600. That's my own preference. This is all the same. Nothing new here. 8.8 in my case for this. Um, this is all the same. Craft name, um, that's still the same, no big deal. Um, this is still the same, uh, we should have went into ports, we already did this, and so you go back into configuration. Receiver, we would set up as a serial based receiver, S bus in this case, no big deal, that's all the same. Uh, where it starts getting different is down here. I'm just going over the new stuff that really kind of popped out in my head. I'm sure I'm going to miss some things, but uh, this is all the same except I always put air mode on, OSD obviously. Uh, Anti-gravity is now a feature that's switchable because a lot of times we used we started started activating this in the CLI command and then it became a mode uh, and it still is a mode, but if you just want on all the time, which I recommend, click that on and also click on dynamic filter. I'll show you why in a bit. 
Um, then you've got the beeper configuration. I used, this is awesome. I'm so glad they did this because I used to change this in CLI because it was really annoying when you plug in your quad and you would have, uh, have everything beeping and going crazy. Gyro calibrated, I turn off. Receiver lost, I do leave on. Receiver lost landing. Um, it'll beep an SOS pattern. You can figure most of this stuff out for yourself. Disarm, I leave on. Arming, I leave on. Arming GPS, I don't use GPS on Betaflight, only iNav. Battery critically low or battery low. So it'll go warning beeps when it's low, like we're used to, and then bat battery critical low, okay? Um, so you can understand the differences. I usually just leave it on low, because uh, you have an OSD most cases. Um, receiver set, uh, a lot of you may notice that when you, um, uh, let me make sure I'm not, oh, that's uh, received for satellites, never mind, turn that off. Disarm, repeat, that's for disarming, I leave that off. It, calibration off, calibration fail off. Ready, that's that once you set the quad on the ground and it stabilizes, it goes da 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 da. Um, you can leave that on if you want. Armed, I leave on. System initialize, I leave off. USB, I leave off. That way it doesn't uh, beep annoyingly when you plug it in the computer. And black box erase, I leave off. Uh, that is awesome because in CLI, you used to type in, uh, what was it? Beeper, then minus sign, and then on underscore USB. And that would turn off the uh, USB beeper because I always bugged me. Uh, now it's a feature, so that's really cool. So we're going to go ahead and save that reboot. I guess I really don't need to save any of this stuff, but um, let's see, that was under configuration. Power and battery, a couple changes here. Uh, if you'll remember, the battery voltage meter source and current and all this stuff used to be in the configuration table. Now it has its own tab. I never use a current meter. And if you don't use it, turn it off. It just saves your CPU load down here. Onboard uh, voltage, which I use. And then this is your scaling, obviously. Warning cell voltage, this is all the same. That it's been here's where your scaling is to uh, check your if you watch my other beta flight video I believe I show how to uh, um, calibrate this divider value multiplier value you usually don't have to mess with that unless it's really off um, usually bring I have to bring this up a point or two to 111 or 112 to get my battery scaling in right on omnibus um, but that's all pretty much the same as it used to be but it just used to be under the configuration tab so that's kind of neat Fail safe, I don't believe has changed. Uh, you do have a fail safe kill switch, uh, which iNav has, and that's where I'm used to seeing it. You know, it's the oh shit switch, um, where if you kill it, bam, it drops from the sky, but you can also disarm it, does about the same thing. This is all the same, I'm not gonna go over it. PID tuning, this is where it gets a little bit different. This stuff is all the same as it used to be that you see right here, uh, for the most part. Um, angle mode strength, let's just double check. Okay, one of the things I do do is go into the filter settings tab. Remember when we were in configuration, I was in configuration and I said, make sure you put on this dynamic filter. Always put that on, then go back down to PIDs, go into your filter settings, change by quad to PT1. That's a different uh, low pass filter type and that's what I always used to do in CLI. With every single quad I build, I change it to PT1. It's a smoother, I'm not gonna get into the, the technical of it. Um, if you can stand his voice and his comic strip ego, you can go over to uh, a Joshua Bardwell's site and he'll tell you all about this crap. But anyway, sorry, a little bit of a slam there, but whatever. Um, change this to PT1, hit save, go fly your quad for a minute, 30 seconds, feel your motors. If they feel hot, leave it alone. If they're hot, you might want to put this back to buy quad. But if they're just a little tickly warm or whatever, normal, that's great. Then you zero this guy out, save it, and go fly it again. See if they've gotten hot. If they haven't, then zero this one out. Do the same thing. And then if they're still good and you've got a good frame and nothing's vibrating, you don't have nasty harmonics and everything, and your motors still seem kosher, zero this one out and try it. So ideally, you're going to have zero there, zero there and zero or lower here lower than 260 um, if you have this on pt1 phase one phase two phase three phase four pt1 by just changing from bi quad to pt1 you will see a difference um, and then as long as you're not getting hot and funky 
start changing these to zero. And if you can get a quad with PT1 with all four of these at zero, um, I'm sorry, not y'all pass, these three, D term, this one and this one, you're gonna have a smooth bird, man. Let me tell you what, it's gonna be awesome. So that's my little tip. I always put them on PT1. I've never had a problem just doing that. And these sometimes when I'm bored, I'll play with these. Uh, but that is a really, really good tip. Remember this. So that's in the PID setting and go over to the tab. Um, but that's only if you have that dynamic filter enabled here on the configuration tab. So make sure you do that. At least change it to PT1. I always used to change that in CLI, but now they've made enough people have done it that uh, they made it a feature that you can put change on and off. And then the anti-gravity gain. Put this at 7. That's a pretty good five to seven. This is gonna help you with your prop wash, dropping out of the sky, threshold usually leave alone. Um, this is really nice. This is something else I used to change in the CLI too. So that has also been added as a feature. That's awesome. So receiver, uh, I don't think anything's really been changed on receiver. Modes, uh, arming is the same. All of this is the same except for Camera control and camera control two, camera control three, I believe are new. I don't use those. That's an iNav thing again for me. Uh, but there's now a pre-arm switch. I've heard a bunch of people bitch about this. They like to use it. They set up their Tyrannus. They go through the logic of their Tyrannus and set this up. So they have to hit two switches to get the thing to arm. I'm sorry. I don't know. I've never had a problem. The only time I've ever been hurt by quadcopters, me being a dumbass and leaving the props on and being stupid. Um, an arm switch for me is enough, but some people like a pre-arm. So basically what you can do is you can set this to a secondary auxiliary switch and then put your arm switch on a different one and make sure they're both where they need to be in regards to your transmitter and you'll literally have to hit two switches to enable it to arm. Um, hopefully you're wearing a styrofoam helmet when you're doing this too because if you're that weird about it, I don't know, I think that's kind of overkill. But either way, so that's new for those of you that like the pre-arm gig. That's a drone feature from the old days, um, but uh, yeah, that's cool too if you like that. Adjustments, I believe, is all the same. I honestly haven't gone through this. I don't play with it that much. Servos, that should still be all the same. Motors, um, looks to be the same. OSD has gotten different, and I really like some of the OSD. If you look at how this has been done, they enable everything on, which is kind of annoying. Um, but there's some really neat features that they've done. RSSI, main battery voltage, da 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 crosshairs, artificial, I, I always leave main volt, voltage on, artificial horizon, horizon, timer one, timer two, we'll leave on, fly mode, we all know what that does, craft name, we all know what that does, throttle position, VTX channel, that's if you have a corresponding VTX that is uh, omnibus speaking, current draw, if you use a current meter, well, that's not, not new, milliamp drawn, GPS, GPS, that's not beta flight, um, Altitude, PID rule, pitch, yaw, that's all the same. Power, um, that's a you just your power milliamp. In, instantaneous electrical power consumption, which is kind of cool. PID rate, warnings. Um, if you have any type of funky warning, it's kind of cool to have, I suppose. Um, low voltage is right there. I, on my... Um, Kakute F4 that's running 3.2, I have this on. And it's kind of cool, but it's also kind of annoying because if you if you do get a low voltage, like if you do a, a really hard punch out and it sags out, you'll see in my uh, DVR footage of that quad, my low voltage flashes on all the time just for a second. Kind of annoying. Um, average cell voltage I think is really cool. GPS, longitude, and latitude, that's an INAV thing in my opinion. Um, debug, pitch angle. Some of these are new that I've never even used. Battery, main battery usage tells you your milliamp drawn. Um, I don't use current meters on boards, even if they have them, I don't use them. Disarmed or armed, uh, I would hope you know the difference. Um, home direction, you need a compass. Home distance, you need a compass and a GPS. Numerical heading, G that's all GPS stuff. A compass bar which I really wish they would put an INAV. So if you INAV guys are listening, put that in there. That's cool. Uh, but unless you have a magnometer in your flight controller, you're not going to see that. ESC temperature, if you've got that ability, and ESC RPM, and that's it. Now, here's usually pretty much what I end up with, okay? Um, four quads. 
not my drones look totally different. So I always put an on time and your fly minutes. I don't worry about minutes powered on. Um, but this is new over here how they've done this. You can change your timers total arm time or last arm time or just on time and the same selection down here which is kind of cool and then you can go down to the seconds or the hundreds of seconds if you want to get that anal about it if you're doing battery studies or whatever and then you set the uh timer that you want like me on a mini quad we set this for three um not on arm not on on time but usually on the total armed time i put this on three minutes or fly time if you will um so that's pretty cool i like how they they split these up i'll never use it but it's kind of neat and then uh, if you're using your uh, milliamp current meter, you'll probably want to adjust this. This is pretty cool too. Uh, if you remember, if you guys are flying beta flight with your on-screen display, when you disarm at the end of the flight, it shows all the schmutz up here that you need or don't need. I don't really care most of the time. Max speed, only if you have a GPS and compass is that going to work in most cases. Minimum battery is kind of cool to know. Minimum RSI if you're using RSSI. Um, max current if you're using a current meter, which I don't. How many milliamp you've used. Max altitude if you have a barometer. Black box I never use unless it's testing. Uh, your end battery, which is the voltage at time of disarm. That's very cool to have. Uh, do you want your total fly time, whichever timer that you have enabled over here, you might want over here. And max distance, that only works if you have a GPS. Um, and black box log number if you're doing tests. So you can limit how much crap that is thrown up on here when you're done flying, which I kind of like, because mine always showed the RSSI and it always showed altitude and things like that. And I don't have any of that, I don't use that stuff on a mini quad. So uh, it's neat that you can turn that off now. I'm very psyched about that. Um, sensors, uh, we all probably know what these are. Um, accelerometer blah, blah 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 if you're doing testing and you want to i'm shaking my flight controller that's pretty cool tethered logging that's not new black box nothing new in there and cli uh so yeah that's that's the quickie run over um i have been flying the 3.2 for a while now and uh so far at least on the kakute and the omnibus it seems to be relatively bug free and flies really well i like the fact that they took a lot of our uh, commands that a lot of us were typing manually into CLI and made them features that you can turn on and off. That saves a ton of time. I really like that. So kudos and shout out to all the developers in the, in the uh, community that works on Betaflight. You guys are just the best and uh, you make all our lives a lot more fun. So hopefully this helps you guys, anybody that wants to know. And if you have any questions, let me know. I will be more than happy to, uh, to help you out. So until next time, keep the shiny side up. Take care. Have fun. Bye.